beautiful friends. My name is Anna. Welcome back to my kitchen. And today I'm going to show you how to make Cuban, traditional Cuban picadillo. Um, in case you don't know, I am Cuban. I was born in Cuba. So I'm very familiar with this dish. It's my go-to. It's one of my favorite Cuban dishes ever. Well, I have a few, but this is like one of the top Cuban dishes for me and this is actually the first dish that I ever made back when I started cooking. I think I was like 13 when I started cooking and it's a fun story. I'm gonna tell you um, how I started cooking and how it all began because I love, love, love. That's my favorite thing. I love to be in the kitchen. You will always find me in the kitchen. I love to be here with friends and family, little glass of wine, we talk, so I want to have the same experience with you guys through the camera. So I'm going to tell you my story of how I started cooking. But before I do that, let me show you the ingredients so we can go ahead and get started. You're going to need your ground beef, a little bit of white wine. Traditionally, we use um, something called vino seco, but I don't like vino seco because I don't personally like the taste, but that's like the traditional thing to make, uh, to use. I like to use just a regular white, like a dry white wine that I always have on hand for cooking. I use a Pinot Grigio. That's my favorite cooking, like white wine to cook with. You're gonna need some water or chicken broth or stock. You're gonna need salt, pepper some olives make sure you get a little bit of that briny uh, from the olives it's going to give the because you an amazing flavor you're going to need your red pepper onion you're going to need a potato which we're going to dice and boil some oil a little bit of garlic well a lot of garlic actually some tomato sauce little packet of goya sazon goya this one has culantro and ashot, which is coriander and ground anato. I have some ground cumin, some parsley flakes, a little bit of dried oregano, and a few bay leaves. That's all. While I shop my onions and pepper, I'm going to tell you my little story of how I started to cook. Let me put this over here. Okay, so um, I started to cook because I never really liked my mom's cooking. I adore, love my mother, but I have to admit, she's not the greatest um, cook. She only cooked because she obviously had to feed us. Um, I, My dad, on the other hand, is a pretty good cook, even if he doesn't cook as often. So as a child, of course, I would always complain about her cooking and she started telling me that if I didn't like her food I could cook my own and I took that very seriously <laughs> so I remember when I was about like 13 years old I'm trying to peel this onion and it is not working out for me um so I remember when I was about like 13 years old I already had some experience in the kitchen like I would make pancakes that kind of stuff. I think I've always been very passionate about cooking. I just, I didn't have the opportunity to, since I was so young, of course, my mom wasn't very comfortable with me uh, being in the kitchen all the time, even though she used to like, let me make eggs and pancakes and all that stuff. Like, but aside from that, I remember one day um, she was gonna make the picadillo and I was like, you know what, let me, let me make it. I'm going to make the picadillo. And I remember it wasn't the greatest because I've always been, I was always a very, very picky eater. So I didn't like onions. I didn't like peppers. I didn't like any of that stuff in my food. I would always take it out. Um, so I made the picadillo just with like powder seasoning. And I have to say that to me at that moment, it was good but it wasn't a very good picadillo. It did have good flavor, but it wasn't really like good picadillo like this one. This was like probably the best picadillo you will eat in your life. Um, then I started to get a little bit more in the kitchen. Um, about a year later, I came across um, Laura Ritali from Laura in the Kitchen. I love me that girl. I have learned so much from her. So. 
I started to get more in the kitchen. I started to watch the cooking channel. I started to watch the Food Network, all of that good stuff. And I just started um, being a little more comfortable in the kitchen. And that's where my love for food started coming through. And since I was such a picky eater, I have to tell you, I have improved my palate so much. So if you're a picky eater, start getting in the kitchen, start cooking. I went through that. I was a picky eater till I was like 18 years old, pretty much. I pretty much eat everything and anything now. <laughs> There's still a few little things that I can't eat, but uh, most of the stuff I'm really comfortable with and I'm not afraid to try things anymore. So that is my story of how I started. Wow, this like pepper is massive. Um, that's my story of how I started cooking. My eyes are <laughs> killing me right now because of the onions. So if you are kind of passionate about food and you don't know what to start, just like get in the kitchen. I still have like so much to learn. Um, but I love to get in the kitchen and once you have your basics down, it's like you're good to go. So I am going to finish shopping my veggies here and then I'm going to meet you over at the stove so we can start cooking. I have my skillet here on medium heat. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of oil. You don't need much. So I just like to break it apart like so. We're just gonna let it brown on both sides. We wanna develop as much color as possible. My meat has been cooking for about, say, good four, almost five minutes on that side. I hope you can tell that it has developed some nice browning. Okay, my meat is looking wonderful. I let it cook for about 10 more minutes. And now this is what it looks like. Uh, it looks a little bit lighter in, on camera than it actually is. You want to remove it from the pan, add it to a plate so we can cook our veggies. Oh, it smells wonderful. Oh, I did season it with a tiny bit of salt, just so you know, just a tiny bit. I'm using a slotted spatula to remove the meat so that way I can leave behind some of that beautiful fat because we're gonna cook our peppers and onions in there. There's about a little more than a tablespoon of oil in your pan. If you see that you have a little more oil than what you need, um, go ahead and discard some of that oil. But I have about two tablespoons of oil. And as you can see, all these brown bits are gonna be incredible flavor now when we start cooking the peppers and onions for because we're gonna lift all of that. Those brown bits are going to be incorporated into our dish. So I still have the heat on medium. And I'm just going to cook my onions and peppers until they're really nice and tender. That's gonna take about, I would say, five to six minutes. At about the five minute mark, I'm going to add the garlic. Okay, my peppers, onions, garlic are done cooking. Now I'm going to add the meat back into my pan. All right, I'm going to mix everything together. We're gonna season it. Okay, so to it, I'm going to add my sazon goya. I'm going to give my spices a nice mix before. Okay, you're going to need some salt. So only season it a little bit now because you might need to season it after. Okay, some generous amount of pepper. Now let's mix this baby together. Oh, that smells incredible already. I wish you guys could smell this. Beautiful, okay. Now we have to deglaze our pan with a little bit of wine. Make sure you scrape your pan so you get all of those beautiful bits of flavor incorporated in your dish. Okay, I'm gonna let the wine 
cook down for about a minute before we add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so the wine has been cooking down. Now you add your tomato sauce and your water. I'm just gonna clean out my can a little bit. You give everything another quick mix. We add our bay leaves right in there so they can give us some beautiful flavor. And now you cover this with a lid and you let it cook for about 20 minutes. Once it hits about the 10 minute mark, you want to start boiling your potatoes until they're fork tender so they can be ready once the picadillo is ready so you can mix the whole thing together, add the olives at the end and it's gonna be fabulous. Okay, so my picadillo has been cooking for about 20 minutes and as you can see this is what it looks like it is so so beautiful as you can see um, it's not as soupy anymore now I like to add my drained potatoes now we mix it all together you can do this with fried potatoes but I just wanted to boil them this time instead of frying them um, make sure you don't overcook them too much otherwise they'll break when you mix them together we add our olives okay so we add all of our olives okay and I like to add about a tablespoon of that brine because I think it just gives the picadillo the most amazing salty flavor Look at that. Tell me that's not absolutely beautiful. I'm going to taste it for seasoning. Okay, does need a the smallest amount of salt. I always tend to under season because if you add too much salt at the beginning, then it's hard to take it out. I'm gonna let this just cook together with the potatoes and the olives for about five more minutes uncovered. My picadillo is finally done. I don't know if you guys can see that, but ooh, I hope you can see it. It is so, so beautiful. I like to finish it off with a little bit of fresh parsley or cilantro. Right there. It looks so nice this way. And then here's how we usually eat it. So we got our black beans, white rice, a little bit of avocado. You can use, uh, you can also eat it with totones. I actually have a recipe for that in the video, in the channel already. You can do maduros. Uh, you can do a salad, pretty much whatever you want it with. So then we get our picadillo, put it right there. We have our delicious uh, plate. This is a very traditional Cuban dish. Now we go right into the tasting. So I like to mix my beans and the rice and the picadillo all in there all together. I like to get a little bit of avocado. This is going to be a mouthful. Oh boy, I can't wait. Hmm. Just hits the spot every time. <laughs> it is like it brings me back to my childhood. It brings me back to my culture. I just love this. Oh my goodness. So, so yummy. Oh, I just burned myself. Another thing you can add to your picadillo that's kind of traditional are raisins. You can add raisins right about when you add the olives. Add a little bit of raisins and it gives it a bit of sweetness. I didn't grow up. Uh, with raisins in my picadillo, my, no one in my family has ever done it like that. So I've tried it before. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's not my cup of tea, but that's also like another way. I know some households like to add raisins. So that's another option for you. You can add a little bit of raisins. Um, but to me, it is just perfect the way it is. It is so, so yummy. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. I hope you learn how to make authentic, traditional, Cuban picadillo. I hope you make this. Let me know in the comments if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.